Hosting a live webinar can be super overwhelming and intimidating, especially if you've never hosted one before. Luckily, this webinar hosting platform makes it a literal breeze to set up and host your first webinar live training. Now, in today's video, I'm sharing with you how you can set up and host your first webinar using my favorite webinar hosting platform, Crowdcast. My name is Bree, and I'm here to help you rock your social, crush your course launch, and create consistent 5K months. Now, if any of those are goals you are wanting to hit anytime soon, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified every Friday when a new video goes live. Obviously, with live webinar trainings, whether that is for your coaching program or your courses, when you get the tech set up quickly and efficiently, then that lets you focus your efforts on giving a killer presentation and bringing your best so you can fill up your programs and sell out. Now, Crowdcast is the absolute simplest webinar hosting platform I have used in my business, so let's dive in and show you how you can get yours set up so you can start hosting your live webinar trainings. So the first thing you need to do is head on over to crowdcast.io and sign up for a free trial. Of course, you can always go right in and choose a plan that works for you. Um, they all vary depending on how many attendees you want and how many hours per month you're going to be using the platform for hosting webinars. So once you sign up for either a free trial or a plan, you can log in and this will be your dashboard inside Crowdcast. So to create your first webinar event, you wanna go down and click create an event. So the first thing you need to do when you're creating your event is come up with your event name. So I'm just going to put, and then pick the scheduled date for your webinar. So consider when the best time of day is depending on where your audience is located in the world. Pick a time that's going to work where people are off of work and when they can sit down and attend your training. So I'm gonna schedule this for let's say 5 p.m. on Wednesday, October 7th. After you've selected your scheduled time, select done. And this is just a single event, so I'm going to be clicking done. So then my webinar will be going live in eight days from today. So next up is to write out your description for your event. Now this is gonna show up on the sign up page and you want to cover a few different things here. So you wanna first cover who the training is for, what they'll learn, and what problems it solves. So your webinar training will help people solve a problem. It is for your ideal customers and clients, whoever that might be, and you wanna make it clear that it's for them, that it'll help them learn A, B, C, D, whatever it is you're covering, and it'll help them get a specific outcome or transformation. You can use the formatting, add in images and links and whatever you need to, or videos, um, to really sell people on your webinar training. Once you've written your description, we're gonna scroll down and next is to select the visibility. So if this is going to be public or unlisted. Since this is going to be public for me, I'm gonna keep it as public, but you can also have it unlisted if you only want this to show up for specific people that you've invited. Um, but otherwise, people will still need to sign up in order to attend, so you don't have to worry about random people finding your webinar. Um, after that, access. So is this for anyone? Do you need a payment, a password? Now this is going to be for anyone because it's going to be a free webinar for me, but it also lets you host paid webinars. So if you wanna do a paid webinar training, you can click here and set it to paid. So that way only people who sign up and pay for the event can attend the training. Um, but if you do wanna set it to payment, only access, then you're going to have to integrate your Stripe account and you do that from the settings page within Crowdcast. So you go over here and scroll into settings and then it'll walk you through the process of setting up your integration with Stripe. But again, if you want to host a free webinar, make sure access is set to anyone. Now there's also some extras in here. You can go down to cover and upload a cover photo, add a video trailer, whatever you need to help promote and sell people on the training, you can add that in. So let's just upload one. Here's one from an old webinar that I did. Let's drag and drop that in there and then there. Now I will have this image on my sign up page for my event. Now let's save that. And the next tab is the registration tab. So this you can customize this to collect more information from people signing up for your 
training. So by default, this should ask for their email. If you want to add in, say, their location or a phone number or anything else in here, you can add it in under registration. Multi-streams allows you to also stream it to YouTube and under advanced, there are just some additional things you can set. So you can change the URL if you want to simplify this and make it something like just YouTube test. Um, you can do that. You can limit the seats. If you want to change the text on the registration button, you can do that here. Let's put attend the webinar. You can also choose whether you want to send registration emails, reminder emails, and these help so people will show up live for your training. So I would leave those on. Um, you can choose whether you want to hide attendee number or have it shown. Um, there'll be a little number somewhere on the webinar training showing how many people are watching and a Facebook pixel if you are doing anything with Facebook ads that you need to track. I'm gonna click save. And if you want to edit the reminder emails that get sent out to your audience, then you can go over here into settings and to email templates. So you can select from the, the few that are set up. So there's a registration confirmation, a reminder email, um, and come in here and edit the text in the email. So you can personalize those and change them from the default. So choose the email you want to edit and click to customize and you can customize those with your branding and your messaging. Now, if you wanna view your registration page for your webinar, head on up to options and scroll down to view registration page. And then this is what this looks like. So again, you can go back and change your settings for what your description is going to be, um, what data is shared and change the button. So, but once somebody signs up and they click attend the webinar, then it will collect their email address once you have that set up and then they'll be taken to the webinar page. So this is the back end of your webinar training and you can set things up here for your upcoming webinar. So at the bottom left here, there, first of all, this is the chat box and they'll show up on the right hand side during your presentation. So once you say that it, it pops up there and you can use for you as well as any of your attendees can chat and leave messages there during the presentation. Um, but also there's lots of little tools down here you can use such as your call to action, which is great if you are selling something at the end of your webinar. So you can choose what you want the button to say and the URL for it. So if you are selling a course afterwards, you want to put your URL for your sales page for your course in there. So once you get to that part of your presentation, when you are pitching your course, then you can set this to live. You can set the button to show up and then only then will people on your training be able to go and purchase the course. So I'm going to put it in my coaching page and you can save that. And right now it is set to hide. So when I'm presenting, I am going to go in here, go to my call to action and then click it, toggle it to show. So then that will show up once I am ready to open up my cart and allow people to enroll. And then the button you can see will just show up right underneath the presentation. Um, there's also the ask a question tab, which you can direct your attendees to put in questions in here during the presentation. Now, the best way to do this is to let them know about that at the beginning of the presentation, tell them to type in any of their questions in the ask a question box, and then you can go over these and answer these questions at the end in a short, usually 15 minute Q and A at the end of the presentation. The next tool is the polls button. So if you want to get some feedback from your audience, if you want to know anything about them, you can set up polls so that they can answer. So again, you can add the question and have it set and save it and have it either set to visible or hidden. So if you want this to pop up at a certain point in your presentation, you can come in here and toggle it to visible. There's also an analytics tab here, which you can use to look at your attendee data after the presentation is done. And also the people tab, which will show who has signed up and who is viewing the presentation. Come back here, check out everything, get familiarized with all of the tools that are at your disposal. But once you get to the day of the webinar, you want to show up a bit early and prepare to go live. So you're ready to go right on that time. So this is set to go live on Wednesday, October 7th at 5 p.m. So I might log in 
for 4.30 and just make sure everything's working, ready to go, and I am prepared to start my presentation. But once I do that, I wanna go down here to prepare to go live. And I want to enter the green room with webcam to go live in the browser with my webcam and mic and make sure everything is set up and ready to go when I do go live. And there we go. So this, you can see that my video is working and my mic is working. It is showing um, as I speak and that's all good. You can also change if you have different microphones that you want to switch to or cameras as well. So I'm gonna save because everything is working fine. So now I'm in the green room, I'm preparing to go live. So you can see at the top here, there are all these buttons I can use so I can toggle my mic if I want to mute myself, toggle my video if I don't wanna show up just yet, um, whether you want HD or not, or if you want to change your settings for your camera and mic. And then here is the share screen button. So I'm gonna click on share screen. So I want to share my slides. So I have my slides open up in another tab. So I'm gonna go over here to Chrome tab and I have my 10K Instagram Blueprint webinar slides here. So I'm gonna select that and hit share. So now it is sharing my slides. It's sharing, so it is showing that tab. So you can see here, there's the blue box. That is what is showing up on my presentation. So once I start live, I'm gonna get on and introduce myself, say hello to my attendees, and then I'm gonna share my screen and then go through my slide. You can always toggle back here to your back end. So when you need to add your call to action or set up a poll and make those come up and check the chat as well. And you can see that now I am sharing my screen and whenever I go here and change through the tabs, it will change in my presentation as well. Um, if you also want to have your head in the bottom corner, I can just go down here and turn my camera and my mic back on and then I am ready to go. So once you're happy with things, everything's ready to go, you can either exit green room if you're not ready to start or when you are, hit go live. And once you click that, you're gonna go live and you wanna click that at the time of your webinar start and then you go and do your presentation. So let's click that, let's go live and it will count you down here so you are ready to go live. Now I am live and if I was hosting this now, people would be seeing me and hearing me. So once you're finished, you can go to end the broadcast when you are finished your presentation and you stop. And the good thing about Crowdcast is that it creates a recording of your presentation automatically and you can share that with anybody that you want. But now my replay has been generated and it lives at the same link as I set up for this event. So I can go and share that with my audience. And that is about it. That's how you host your live webinars with Crowdcast. And it's super simple, it's super easy and definitely way less overwhelming than a lot of the other options out there. So if you wanna keep things simple and clean and easy, then I highly suggest trying out Crowdcast for your next webinar. Now, launching an online course is a lot of work because there are a lot of moving pieces and things you need to set up if you wanna have a successful launch. But if you have been thinking about creating a course or you've started and it's been months and months of creating it and you're still nowhere near being done, I can help. Click the link in the description below to grab my free 90 day course launch blueprint, which will walk you through the entire process of coming up with a killer course idea, creating it, selling it and scaling that so you can create consistent monthly income in your business. Now this guide will take out all the guesswork and walk you through every step that you need to take for a successful course launch. Again, you can grab that at the link in the description below. If you wanna take things a step further than that, I also offer one-on-one -on -one course launch coaching, which you can also check out at the link in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, hit subscribe, and share it with a friend who could also benefit. Also, if you are ready to take your course business to the next level, check out these videos next.